Welcome to the virtual Habitat house party. Sorry we're a little late. Karen and I were just greeting all of our 2020 Happy Award recipients in the virtual green room, and we got a little uh, caught up in the real time moment. So I'm so excited to officially introduce um, our first guest and co-host, really, our CEO, Karen Haycox. Hey, Karen. Hey, everybody. I don't know if you can see me or not. Neither do I, actually. This is my first virtual that I'm hosting for the Virtual Habitat House Party. So I'm just going to be a little sneaky. Oh, Jesse says that they can see us. OK. OK, great. OK, we're here. <laughs> I mean, honestly, this is our biggest lineup of the evening. And we have so many amazing volunteers um, to introduce you to tonight. So for those of you who don't know, um, I, love to t I love to share about the Habby Awards because this actually started, um, much like many of our other programs, volunteer-led. The, the volunteers wanted to come together and celebrate the amazing work that had been done together. And the first celebration was actually um, in the basement of a financial district tavern. Can't get more casual than that. Um, and it's elevated year after year and is now part of our amazing um, Habitat House Party as part of the celebration. Um, Karen, you know, you're obviously our CEO, you're a powerhouse, but you actually volunteer with Habitat in some of your own free time. I would love for you to share some of your um, experience volunteering and why you love our volunteer so much before we bring up our first guest. Sure, thanks, uh, thanks Ricardo, um, and thanks to everybody who's watching alongside us here. Um, you know, uh, one of my least favorite sayings ever in all of Habitat is, oh, I'm just a volunteer. And that's just really not um, how we think of volunteerism at Habitat for Humanity, whether that's here in New York City or in cities around the country and around the world. Um, and, you know, really the volunteers play such a critical role in our work. Um, and I say that I'm a volunteer. Um, you know, you're right. Um, <laughs> people say, what do you do for fun? And what I do for fun is Habitat for Humanity builds. And um, I've been very fortunate in my career to build. I've built in more than 22 countries, I think. I've kind of lost wow. track a little bit. Um, so built in varying styles of houses with any number of families across more than 22 countries. And I think the prevailing takeaway and what the volunteer model really gives us is this idea that we are more alike than we are different. And mm -hmm. um, that whether you're building alongside a family and with other volunteers in um, Glendavala, India, or Nashville, Tennessee, or you know Los Angeles, California, or Edmonton, Alberta, um, it's you know it whether no matter what you're no matter where you're doing this work um, you're you're just really we're more alike than we are different so it so it can be very easy to focus this you know in this day and age on all of the things that separate us and and I think really what volunteerism does is it unites us uh, whether wherever we are on the income strata to maybe the very poorest it exposes us to people that we wouldn't otherwise uh, mix and I think what we find is that we are so much more alike than we are different. I absolutely agree. And it's one of the most beautiful aspects of volunteerism is that it breaks down those barriers. It brings communities together. And especially with Habitat for Humanity, if you've had the opportunity to volunteer nationally or internationally, it truly is a life changing experience. Um, and of course, we are going to honor the volunteers who join us on site tonight. But one of my other favorite things about the Habby Awards is that it really acknowledges the many different ways that you can support an organization like Habitat NYC beyond the build site. Most people around the world are very familiar with swinging a hammer and building that ground, um, building that home from the ground up in partnership with the home buyers and the homeowners. Uh, but this this program tonight is all about the many different ways you can connect with our organization. Um, you're, at, you're absolutely right, Ricardo, because it's, you know, it's many people say, oh, I don't really know. I don't know if I'm great with a paintbrush or great with a hammer, but we'll always say, or I don't know if I if I can do that. I don't have enough skills. We'll always say just willingness is really the key. 
to volunteerism. If you if you are willing to play a role, we will find a role for you, whether that's in the office, on a build site, using a computer, licking the stamps, stuffing the envelopes, um, working the spreadsheets. There are a number of people that when I started with Habitat New York uh, more than five years ago, there were a number of people that it took me some time um, to figure out that they were volunteers and they had desks and stations within our, they were embedded in our staff to such a degree there's no difference between a volunteer and a staff, really, in terms of the, how they showed up. Um, I used to joke with Alex, a, a prior Happy Award winner, um, that, uh, you know, it's, it's he would not be at his desk one day. And I'd say, well, who approved your time off? And it turns, you know, he was a stipended volunteer. So uh, anyway, uh, we're happy, happy to have you uh, with us. Thank you for sharing that. And I absolutely agree. Um, our volunteers are so amazing. And when I first started with Habitat NYC, some of the first people I met in the office were volunteers and I thought that they were colleagues. Um, and I think that speaks to the level of dedication and, and intricacy and involvement that you can have as a volunteer. Um, so before we bring on our first guest, I do wanna give a shout out to one of our Habby Award honorees who could not join us for the live event tonight. Carmen Velez, who is being honored as Beyond Sweat Equity for 2020. Um, Karen, would you like to share a little bit about sweat equity and why it's such an important part of Habitat NYC? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, one of our sponsors once many years ago described it to me as the secret sauce of Habitat, this idea of volunteers coming together and raising walls, but also of families being standing side by side with the volunteers and participating in the construction of their own homes. And really it's the fundamental um, dis different point of differentiation, if you will, between Habitat and any other home building program is this idea of the fact that we, we work side by side with the families that will reside in the homes. And I think anybody who has experienced that, ex that has experienced this, this untold magic of of really of of the volunteer experience and really also of the success of the homes that we build. Um, you know, we have a very low foreclosure rate, under four percent, I think, nationally, and that includes 2008 and some of the bubbles that we go through. And I att I attribute that really to the investment of the family in terms of how they roll up their sleeves and participate in the construction of the homes. That they are really invested in in. The, the fact that this is home. And then one more thing that occurs to me all the time is that you can explain to a family time and time and time again, that all these volunteers are gonna show up and come and help you build your house. And they kind of look at you like, uh-huh, like, mm-hmm. And, and then they see it happen. And I've heard families say, you know, this Saturday, why are you here? Or it's, it's you know, why are you here? And there's something that magic that happens in the in the engagement between two people when someone understands that another person is giving of themselves that they might enjoy the stability of of a simple decent and affordable home and there's some magic there and um and so that's bigger that's bigger than the four walls in a house that they're building that's really about um the magic that sustains us as a community and hopefully as a world i think this idea of reaching out a hand and being part of another's uh life Absolutely. And thank you so much for sharing about what sweat equity is. I know a lot of uh, newcomers to the Habitat scene, they are, they're learning everything that they can about our amazing organization. And I think that the sweat equity component is very significant of the dedication to homeownership. Uh, so a shout out to Carmen Velez, Beyond Sweat Equity honoree and awardee of the year. Thank you so much for going above and beyond. Much love from Karen, myself, and the entire team at Habitat NYC. Um, and just to be, you know, just because I can, um, Housing Services nominated you and was so excited to honor your leadership this year. Um, next, we have Kimberly Castillo and a few amazing volunteers. They're going to be joining us in just a moment uh, to, to virtually accept the Site Volunteer Habby Award. So this category is Way! really- Way! I know, I was kind of trying to figure out if we could do like fireworks, but I guess you can't inside your home. Uh, you know, it's not safe, but we'll, you know, 
we'll whoop it up. Um, so the site volunteer is really reflective of the traditional volunteer experience on site, whether it's construction or a brush with kindness. And actually, um, our vice president of resource develop, excuse me, our vice president of real estate and construction and the REC team nominated these four amazing volunteers who, um, oh, they're here, hello. Yeah. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves really quick. Okay, um, so my name is Kimberly Castillo. Uh, I've heard about New, I mean, sorry, Habitat through New. And, um, you know, it was a great experience the first time I went. Um, but it was very different from the last project we did because the first project that I worked on, it was a completed house already. So, you know, we just knocked down what was inside. But this project, this project, I saw how much hard work needed to get put in and how great, you know, it was like a challenge for me. And I was, you know, thriving to go and bring it down and and just pretty much help Habitat, um, use my strength and, you know, build a, a good community. So it to me, it was honorable. To, you know, so I'm amazed that you guys even are honoring me because I, I honor you guys and uh, you guys do a great job. I, I believe in you guys. I believe in this um, program you guys are doing. I, I think it's great. And that's why, you know, I have no problems volunteering. It, it was worth it. That's that's amazing. Well, we're so very grateful to you guys. And tell us, tell everybody a little bit about the work you did, just real quick. Oh, man. Um, so basically, when we first got there, it was nothing filled. It was nothing um, but weed, uh, like, I would say maybe like five feet tall. And from the back to the front, um, it was great. You, I got to see crickets. I never saw crickets so close <laughs> before, but it was a great experience. Um, you know, as, as much as, um, we were trying to get things done as fast as we possibly could, it was still worth trying to do it together, especially with the other two, other three members that you guys, um, honored, um, working with them was great. Um, they definitely helped me made it easier, um, for all of us. Uh, we worked as a team and I think that's why we were able to bang it out, um, and you know, try to get it done in a timely manner. But it, it was great. I love the to see how it was in the beginning, and to just to see how beautiful it ended up was amazing. You know. And you guys had the first. You were the first volunteers back post COVID, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's a huge thing. That's like that's that's a huge deal. We were so grateful to welcome you back. Thank you, and you volunteered safely and stayed masked and did the work. I don't want to, we don't want to leave uh, you behind say, without an opportunity for your friend to say something. Oh, that she could. <laughs> Hi. Um, I, uh, my name is Brittany Reyes. I prefer Reyes. Um, yeah, I probably am just piggybacking off of what Kim said, but it was uh, a heavy experience because um, I didn't know that we were the first ones back. I was just like, hey. I need to volunteer. I need to do something. <laughs> and I know about Habitat for Humanity because I went to um, non-traditional employment for women. And um, yeah, they're the ones who told me about um, this organization. And um, Kim actually volunteered uh, a previous time on a house. Um, and yeah, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but I know that um, I'm usually, uh, despite being, um, you know, not fully prepared, I am prepared to do what I need to do to make sure the work gets done. Um, that is awesome. Even at home, so that is awesome. It, uh, well, listen, we're so grateful. We're grateful to you and to all your friends. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you for the work that you did. Thank you for being such great champions for our organization. And the crowd went crazy. Yeah, actually, I'm literally getting text messages from our team and it's just like crying emojis. Everyone's just like so happy uh, because we love our volunteers at Habitat NYC. Um, and I also just want to take this opportunity to give a shout out to not just both of you, but Modeso uh, Sotomayor and Vishal Jadava, who could not be here in person tonight. So the four of you 
were actually on site every single day for this project at Hart Street. I also want to give a shout out to Shamaya McQuaig, who designed the mural. She's um, our Brush With Kindness manager, uh, soul mate, in my opinion. I love her spirit and just very creative person. So thank you both so much for taking the time to volunteer for learning about Habitat NYC, for inspiring the people in your networks to be more involved, aspiring your friends and family. And also, I'm just like really digging these chill vibes. Can we just do like a virtual hang after this and just like, <laughs> chill? Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much. All right, so you're just gonna, uh, you know, I'm just being a little extra on the technical since I'm learning all the things in real time. Um, you can head back to the virtual green room and hang out with the rest of our virtual uh, green room guests, the Happy Award recipients. You can end the call at the bottom of your screen. And up next, we have Deborah. I'm not even going to attempt to say Deborah's last name because I'm terrified of butchering it. Bechtel. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. you. Thanks, Thank folks. You. See you soon. Bye. <laughs> All right. And a little bit about the award that Deborah is receiving, the Sandra Roach Community Partner Award. So this is for any individual or organization that has that has shown outstanding commitment to the Habitat NYC mission. Um, our mission and vision is obviously a city and world where everyone has a decent place to live. There she is, we did it. <laughs> Are we having fun with all the technology, Deborah? <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, welcome, understand Deborah. The <laughs> welcome, welcome, Deborah, you've been uh, very patient. So. Um, the, the Sandra Roach Community Partner Award, right? Is that where we're going with this, Ricardo? Yeah, exactly. Um, so Sandra Roach was um, an employee at uh, M &B Bank, M &T Bank, who has been a banking partner of ours for many years. And she was one of those people in, uh, in a business environment that really stood out and made a difference. Um, every day and that's why Deborah, that you're, you're here. And so every year she sadly, um, she sadly passed away uh, some years ago. And usually when we're doing um, our virtual Habitat house party, we invite members of her family um, to be present when the um, when this award is uh, passed on to the to the annual awardee. So um, sadly, they couldn't be with us to the, this uh, for this event. But um, but we her memory really lives on as a testament to the impact that volunteers can have. Um, you know, many, you know, many times when you think about people who come in with corporate teams, I think people come in with corporate teams for a variety of reasons. But, you know, sometimes you can feel a little voluntold, like, I don't know why I'm here, but everybody at my company's here, you know, or I don't know why I do this, but my company does this. And, you know, I don't think that's something that happens prevalently at Habitat. But in particular, in Sandra's case, she, um, she really stood out in terms of doing her daily job, but going above and beyond and really exemplifying community service. And we are so fortunate at Habitat that so many of our corporate sponsors, so many of our vendors come on side. Um, and and uh, we are so grateful to you, Deborah, for all of the work that you do um, uh, here. And so we're happy to honor you with, with the in, in Sandra's memory uh, for this award. Thank you very much. Maybe so. Tell um, so. So tell us a little bit about what you do at uh, at Brooklyn Law School. Um, I my background is in representing low income co ops, and so almost twenty five years ago, I started a clinic at Brooklyn Law School where students would be able to um, learn about real estate and community development and represent these low income co ops. So um, since then, I've been doing that, I'm mostly representing low-income co-op boards and um, many of the, and they are, you know, I think very, and a very important resource for affordable housing and, and maybe increasingly so in a way as we, as we lose more and more affordable housing, if we can hold on to those buildings, it's, it's really, really important. That's great. Well, thank you. And Deborah and her team provide pro bono legal services to our housing service department. Um, along those lines. And we are ever grateful, Deborah, to you and your team for that kind of work. Um, you know, 
this quick side story. When I came to Habitat, I, I've been with Habitat for 20, coming up on 22 years. And um, and I like to say I started when I was five. You can do the math. And uh, um, But when I was coming to New York, which is a little over five years ago, uh, people uh, people said to me, well, but New York, the New York housing market is really unique. You know, it's a very unique uh, housing market, how will you react? And I thought, you know, kind of, I listened with half an ear, like, yeah, yeah, of course it's unique. You know, every community is unique. Um, and then I got here and went, holy smokes, <laughs> the affordable housing landscape in New York City is truly unique. So um, we are so very grateful to you and your team for the intricate work behind the scenes that you do to, that, that really assists us and streamlines the work that we do. So a big tremendous thank you to you and the team and i i just would i just point out that i'm especially grateful to habitats um habitats new york city loan fund for i would say dedication and creativity but also sophistication like they've really jumped in on some some very complex projects that is um, yeah love that is awesome (laughs) That story, that I'd love to hear that. You just filled up my heart. I love that. And, uh, you know, the work we do is not easy, but it is certainly uh, worthwhile. And you're part of that team um, now and forever. So thank you for that. Thanks. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. And thank you for your incredible leadership, your contributions, and the amazing work that you're doing with our housing services department, our entire organization. Um, any last words before we send you off into the virtual green room. <laughs> no, just just keep at it. I think it, that it's really been a lender of last resort for a number of buildings and, and so, so important. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much and we'll see you soon. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. All right. I think I figured out the technology now. I was the queen of our webinars via Zoom, but this whole new platform we built out, I'm still learning it. Next, we have Charles, one of our favorite volunteers, being honored with the Cornerstone Volunteer of the Year. And I don't know if it's shady to say it out loud, but technically received the most nominations from multiple departments um, this year, which I thought was really, really (laughs) awesome. Um, Karen, take it away. I just really want to say thank you, Charles. You know, it's, I have said, I am in the minority in that I said, you know, I don't know that I've actually met Charles. You know, I sort of zip zip through the office, went back in those days when we did that. Um, But your name, Charles, comes up all the time. I'll get Charles or let's get Charles or Charles knows that. Let's do, you know, you are... um, there, you know, you are like the the wind. Now I'm really going to get hokey. The wind beneath our wings. Your name, you know, my mother, were she alive, would say your ears would your ears should be ringing. The number of times that right. that we say your name uh, in conversations uh, across Habitat with reverent tones and uh, and uh, underpinned in gratitude. I really want to say thank you so much. Uh, for everything that you do. You're such a vital part of the fabric of our team and we count on your um, your reliable consistency um, and your willingness to be helpful. So thank you so much on behalf of all of my team across the organization um, and all of us tonight. So thank you. Right. Thank you so much. It was very, I was very flattered and surprised when I was told by Ricardo of the, uh, of the uh, award. Um, yeah, I mean, I've really enjoyed working uh, at the office, and I hope before too long we'll get to, to go back there. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I was looking at Idealist and uh, looking to make myself useful while I had kind of a uh, the opportunity to. Um, and I came across this ad for um, uh, Habitat NYC and Marketing and Communications, um, and I've been doing writing, so I the uh, I kind of wanted to do more like graphical things. It just kind of exercised that part of my brain. So um, that plus I've been a, I've been a donor to Habitat for a few years. So it was a really nice yeah it was a really nice uh, opportunity. I thought it was kind of uh, kind of lucky to find that. So um, yeah, I started in I guess it's it's been uh, it was July of last year I guess, um, and I was working with Devin and Lib in um, Devin Shaughnessy and Lib Tijan in um, marketing and communications. And so um, 
yeah, I've been I've been helping with uh, web page things, um, uh, event pages. I know with Ricardo, we worked with the Habitat Young Professionals page, which was nice. Um, it was kind of an all hands on deck uh, thing. I, I noticed, um, and uh, yeah, I've, I and then oh, then during the shutdown, I've um, I've continued to answer emails, um, but I've also kind of branched out uh, to help the housing services department. So I'm working with Charlotte Bell and Hannah Presser um, in terms of just answering basic questions about uh, housing, uh, answering calls. We get plenty of calls that come in. Um, and yeah, I've noticed every, just everybody's been really, it's, it's like, it's a really a nice familial atmosphere. Um, everyone has a good sense of humor, although they're serious of, at what they do. So um, yeah, no, I've just really enjoyed my time. And uh, yeah, I, I like to uh, continue to help out while I can uh, re remotely. Well, you are welcome any day, any hour of the day, um, all the time. So thank you tr really tremendously. Um, uh, Charles was kind enough to shout out a number of my Habitat team. I'm so incredibly proud of the staff that makes this the wheels turn on this organization um, every day, all the time. Um, everyone goes above and beyond. And um, and so thank you for your deference to, and calling them out because they're just tremendous. And um, and I hope that people who listen to you got some ideas about, hey, I didn't know I could, you know, I didn't know I could do that as volunteering for Habitat. So really right. important work because, uh, you know, we could quite honestly be probably be twice the size in terms of the need. You know, this is the most flexible staff ever. They wear so many hats. They do, you know, so many jobs they're you know they're they're sort of you know painting i feel like i have this image in my head of somebody you know swinging a hammer and painting a wall and typing with their toes and you know we're really that's kind of i say to my team all the time my goodness you know i keep stretching you to do more and you keep doing it so um without uh, key volunteers like you helping to supplement the staff that make the wheels turn we'd really be uh in a quandary so you are truly tr appreciated, so thank you. Oh, I appreciate it, thanks so much, yeah. Not to go down this path too much, but typing with our toes, I don't think I've mastered yeah. that skill just yet. Um, <laughs> you gotta, you just need a couple more years. I got a couple years <laughs> like. Um, and Charles, I do, I wanna, I wanna add on to what Karen just shared because every, I mean, so true, um, but also your, your commitment to continue volunteering through our remote operations and navigating the different departments. I think like all of our other Habby Awards who represent different ways of volunteering, um, you've really exemplified how you can move and flow with the organization. So thank you so much for your leadership, for always being proactive. Um, you also get a crown for chill vibes as well. <laughs> <laughs> just go with the flow all the time. Um, all right. Any last words before we send you back to our virtual green room for all of our viewers tonight? No, I, actually, a couple of weeks ago, um, uh, we had like a little virtual cocktail hour, which was pleasant. I mean, we, yes. we, hadn't, see, we hadn't seen each other for a few months. At least I hadn't. So that was um, a really nice to sort of just get back in touch again, uh, you know. Not just just not electronically through email, but actually kind of in person. Nice. So yeah. So um, anyway, this yeah, I'm I'm complete. I was completely flattered, and uh, it was just out of left field. I was you know it was such a nice thing. So thanks so much. I really really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you yeah. very much. Thank you, sure. Charles. Awesome. Right, Thank you, Charles. We'll see you in the green room. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Next up, we have Pastor Joseph who is being honored by the Habitat NYC Restore as the Restore Volunteer of the Year. Fun fact, this is the second time that Pastor Joe is being honored by the Restore for his incredible contribution. Oh, and of course he's wearing the Restore shirt. Look at that shirt. branding. That's some nice <laughs> branding. branding. There it is. I know Leslie and Joe are gonna love that. Um, <laughs> For those of you who are not familiar with the Habitat NYC Restore, it is our resale shop in Queens. Um, Leslie is the king of getting the best deals. Am I echoing? No, I think it might be Pastor Joe, your uh, your speaker um, might be causing a bit of an echo maybe. Maybe you can mute while you're not on and that might help. There we go. Right, oh, Jesse's you. on it. Jesse's on it. Yep. He's got gotcha. you. 
If you keep hearing the name Jesse, that's our wonderful technician working on the back end. But again, um, our ReStore is an amazing resale shop led by Leslie, the director of the ReStore. Um, Karen, anything you'd like to share about the ReStore before we pass the mic to Pastor Joe? So the ReStore is the little retail store that could. It is about 3,300 odd square feet in Queens. Um, and we resale, resell good quality donated furnishings and um, and uh, construction material, some construction or um, uh, building materials. And really, so it's it has a great story in that the material is donated to us and the and the funds that we raise help to to generate unrestricted revenue to keep our mission going forward in New York City. Um, and it also retains um, more than Oh, gee, I don't have the number of X number of tons. Um, probably Leslie's going to kill me. She'll probably if she's watching this, she'll text me um, every X number of tons per year of material that is good quality that would otherwise go to landfill. So there's a really strong um, financial story, a really strong uh, environmental story. Um, and one of the the I've met Pastor Joe and the, the, the vision that I have of Pastor Joe is once again, it is a post covid vision. Um, and uh, because when we reopened the ReStore in Queens, the the fan base of customers that shop in that store, that count on that store as a source to scratch their every shopper's desire kind of thing, um, is their passionate customers that go into the ReStore. And so when we reopened um, uh, after COVID, after being closed for quite some time, we had to create a, a way in which shoppers could shop in the ReStore safely. And Pastor Joe, when I met Pastor Joe, he was corralling kind of matting hordes of customers outside of the store because we let them in in smaller groups. And uh, we had them sheltered from the, the sun at that point and the, and the elements. And he was kind of coordinating with everybody coming in. But uh, but in just amazing, amazing story uh, about Pastor Joe and your dedication to the ReStore. We love the ReStore. It is if you haven't been there, it's on Northern Boulevard in Queens. Um, it's a great place to donate material uh, furnishings that you rather than put them in storage. Uh, maybe your kid is going off to college. Maybe you have a rental apartment that you want to furnish. Um, you know, it's just a great place to shop and it's a great place to donate. So uh, check it out on our website. I highly recommend it. Do you want to tell the story of the uh, Hungry Monk rescue truck, uh, Ricardo, or you want me to uh, tell that story? Um, I wonder, Pastor Joe, were you involved with the, re the Hungry Monk Restore partnership? I think you made the introduction, didn't you? Can you unmute him, please, Jesse? There you go. Uh oh, not not unmuted. Still muted. I can see Jesse typing away. He's getting to unmute. Oh, you need to unmute Pastor Joe. Yep. Ain't technology grand. <laughs> see that little microphone? There it okay. is. Okay. All right. Tell us the story. You, I think you connected us to the Hungry Monk Rescue Truck. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, one of the big things my church and community have been doing through the pandemic has been an emergency food program um, in Elmhurst. And I've worked with Father Mike Lopez and Hungry Monk over the past couple of months in uh, doing emergency food relief around um, Elmhurst, Corona, Jackson Heights, Ridgewood, Bushwick. And um, when Leslie said, we've got these trucks sitting around and we want to do something to help people during this crisis, I thought, Mike needs trucks. He picks up food. He rescues food from Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, and all these other supermarkets and retailers. He could use trucks. And um, Leslie and the Restore team took it from there. It's terrific. It's terrific. Shout out to our incredible Restore team being so willing uh, including the truck drivers to suit up and mask up and do this work. You know, it was one of the most frustrating things for our team on the whole ha during COVID has not been being able, not being able to help, you know, um, we've been doing stuff behind the scenes. We've been keeping our buildings moving forward. We've been working with our future home buyers to keep them engaged. We've been 
checking in with our existing homeowners to make sure they're safe. We've been looking at all kinds of programs, but we couldn't actually roll up our sleeves and do anything. And for people like Habitat for Humanity, that's a frustration. And so yeah. when you introduced the Hungry Monk Rescue Truck, and we had, and we could put those trucks, yep, we could put those trucks to use. Um, I mean, it really, it, it fed, certainly it fed um, more than 100,000 families, I believe, over the time that we rode those trucks, but it also fed our souls. And I think, again, it goes back to this idea of when you have something that you can contribute to, to provide for provide for, for your neighbors and friends in need, why, you know, you mu I feel we must do that. And, um, and so while food security is outside of Habitat's core message, it seemed like a natural uh, intersection. We had to leverage what we had to serve the needs of the in the moment. And this this idea, uh, and all of your great work to seed this idea with us, um, has just made a tremendous difference to all of us. It fed our souls throughout uh, the time when we couldn't do what we knew we could do every day, and yet we knew we were making a difference. And so. Really, um, Pastor Joe, thank you for your work that you do with your church every day. Thank you for facilitating the introduction to this important uh, rescue truck operation. And thank you just really for for being a force for good uh, in a time when this world really, really needs it. Beautifully said, Karen, and I will definitely agree that I was blown away by the impact that we were able to have in partnership with the Hungry Monk Rescue Truck and the Restore. So Pastor Joe, thank you so much for facilitating that introduction uh, to be able to, to be part of a community that impacted over 100,000 New Yorkers in a time of need is, is inspiring and it definitely um, I think put some gas in a lot of our team to keep pushing through and and focusing on how we can make a difference as a community. Um, so thank you for your leadership. Any anything you'd like to share before the green room? Um, just a um, thank you to a lot of the Habitat Ralph volunteers and staff uh, that have helped open this door through the pandemic. Uh, post um, after doors could open here in New York City and. Um, well, I'm sure there's been a Habitat family that's talked about getting a Habitat house, but um, my wife and I live in a Habitat Restore house. All the furnishings you see around me are all from the Restore, um, including the shirt. Um, but it's been an um, amazing way to help rescue stuff from landfill, as Karen said, and an amazing way to see stuff get a new life somewhere else and help uh, raise money for Habitat as they try to find decent housing for everybody and do their mission. It's been a really great experience to work with people like Leslie, Joe, Kevin, and Roxanne, Ahmed, and Lucas, and the uh, staff in the store, as well as some um, volunteers. Uh, we had two or three guys from high school who were there almost every day uh, through the summer. Um, Jonathan and Andre, uh, there was Jason and Frank and Angie and a lot of volunteers who really went above and beyond to ensure that the store would be safe and maintained and that we'd be able to continue uh, doing this work. Thank you, Pastor Joe, and thank you. Big shout out to that Restore team. Thank you for doing that. And to anybody who's watching, check us, check us out. Um, it's a, it's a, you know, it's, it's, more than a store, it's a family. I mean, watching watching shoppers come back into that store and interact with Leslie and Joe and the team is was again good for the soul. After could, you could just see everybody was so eager and anxious to be back. Um, I heard people were just like a family coming home. It was like a family reunion. So thank you for being part of our important family, Pastor Joe. Thank you to your wife for being such a dedicated restore shopper. Uh, and, uh, and thank you for showing up branded. So good for you. That's it. I also voted today. Awesome. awesome. No democracy. <laughs> All right, Pastor Joe, thank you so much. You so and much. we'll see you in the green room. All right, take care, everybody. Oh, that was so fun. I love the restore. I love the restore too. Mm. And now 
Kimberly Clark coming up Kimberly next. Kimberly Clark is next. We love Kimberly Clark as well. One last comment about the restore before we move on. If you follow them on Facebook, you will get daily updates on all the new merch. You will also develop a, ser a serious case of FOMO because anything that gets posted on the on Facebook is like automatically immediately gone by the time you get there in real life. For those of you who are um, uh, like me and less less cool and and Jill, FOMO is fear of missing out. I I only recently learned that. So <laughs> yes, um, that's exactly what it means. Yeah. Um, I have a constant case of FOMO. That's just because I like to be in everyone's business. Um, <laughs> Awesome. Hi, Kimberly. Hi. Welcome, Kimberly. Thank you for being Hi. patient in there in the green room. I wish, you know, in my mind's eye, in everyone's mind's eye, I'm going to cast the picture of the green room. Is this very luxurious, very cool sort of lounge area. It's got, you know, trays of uh, of cocktail shrimp and, um, yes. and, you know, Prosecco and, you yes. know, Evian water. Not that at all. It's just a virtual room with a chat function. So our team is just waiting there. Maybe you know, maybe next year we'll be able to meet in person and and uh, and celebrate with you in a real green room. So uh, yes, we are happy to welcome you here, Kimberly. I am so excited, um, specifically by our partnership with Thrivent. So uh, I, it is just such a delight. Um, I think I shared this with you. Um, a hundred years ago, whenever I don't know the exact amount of time, I just say a hundred years ago. A hundred years ago, I happened to be at the, one of the first tables when Thrivent stood up with Habitat International and said, we are going to make a bold commitment to um, afford providing affordable housing um, around the nation and really worked with uh, Habitat International staff to put together this really insightful and impactful program um, that provides much needed funding and uh, human resources um, to provide this housing that we do. And because it is very different in New York City, as I like to say, in Manhattan, New York, than it is from Manhattan, Kansas. And um, that's right. You you really get that, and um, and it's really an opportunity. It, it really is has been just such a tremendous partnership for. I know I speak for certainly for everybody here in New York City, but for habitats around the nation and indeed around the world. Um, that that uh, Thrivent's Thrivent's commitment to our work has just it's changed so many lives. So we are just beyond thrilled to be able to welcome you here and celebrate you here in New York City. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And for those who've never heard of Thrivent, I mean, we're a financial um, organization just like every other bank. Um, we've been around for over 100 years. But the unique thing about Thrivent is that we are based on Christian values, which is something that I'm extremely proud about. It allows me to work for a financial services organization as an engagement leader where I can live my faith out loud. Um, I've been on the team now for two years, and part of that role is to be a partner working with Habitat for Humanity in New York City. And I can say, Karen, you have to be so proud of your team. Um, in just a short time, I've worked as a partner with them. Um, they're bright, responsive, um, extremely smart. They're funny. Um, <laughs> You have to be funny. You have to yeah. be funny in New York, right? Yeah. So that is um, awesome. I can't tell you how much that fills me up. You know, it, it I, should. You should be so so proud yeah. of them. So so proud. I really so, am. Um, and then the thriving um, relationship with Habitat goes back more than fifteen years, I believe. And so, over fifteen years, I think we've contributed like two hundred and sixty-seven million dollars. Um, to the cause over $267 million. That's right. That That's is right. awesome. That is and unfathomable. Yes. And um, about 24,000 individuals across the world has, has been served. And um, we've done millions and millions of hours of volunteer hours. But my work with Habitat started from my days on the yard at Spelman College down in Atlanta as a young student and starting the work and build houses. And as I grew into my career and I bounced from San Francisco to Texas to Atlanta, all the way to New York, that work within me still continues. And so my mom had always instilled in me to wherever you live, just always give back to the community. And so 
I was so thankful to find out as an engagement leader at Thrivent that I had an opportunity to now be boots on the ground in New York City with your team. And we've done some great work on building on faith. We work very closely with churches and other nonprofits to rally those forces, to get out and bang some, um, grab some hammers and hit some nails. Um, so it's just, um, I'm just so proud of the work that we've done and so proud of your team. And I just look forward to working with you guys for many years to come. Well, the feeling is more than mutual. It is, um, you know, you have been such a tremendous partner to us, especially at this time when we've stepped into this virtual world, warts and all, you know, trying yeah. to trying to keep a message out there, trying to keep people engaged. I think that people crave conversation and communication. Mm -hmm. and, um, and as much as we all, you know, spend an awful lot of time, you know, with our behinds in chairs staring at screens, I mm -hmm. think there's something... The, the, the upside of this is I think it's given us an opportunity to tell our stories That's like this right. in, a, in a very Absolutely. kind of is in an intimate way, you know, mm -hmm. in a funny kind of way. This is a little bit easier to listen to than it is if you're in a cavernous room, you know, of 500 <laughs> people. I mean, um, and also, you know, we could all have our pajamas on from this <laughs> from here down. Who would know? Right. So who would know? Uh, the, the the old joke about that is I used to say in past galas, I've said, oh, we're that we could only just stay at home and wear our pajamas and do a pajama gala. Little did I know no. <laughs> that we have I have we have manifested this uh, this online version of the pajama gala. So uh, well, ha well, hats off to you guys for being able to uh, pivot so quickly um, in these very interesting times. So, you know, just look forward to figuring out what this new lay of the land looks like and still just still continuing to do the good work. So, so grateful to you. Thank you. So thanks for having me and thank you for the award. I'm, I'm honored and I feel very blessed. Thank you. Well, I have to say thanks too, but I love hearing this conversation. It's so inspiring. Um, I'm actually just kind of learning about the Thrivent Partnership as of this year. So when I was doing my homework, I was totally blown away by the impact and the partnership. Kimberly, I'm also a huge fan of your style. I know that has nothing to do with affordable housing, but every time I see you, you just bring it all the way. So thank you for that. Thank you for that energy. We need it. Um, but I want to say uh, in a very seriously, thank you so much to you and Thrivent for not only being amazing faith partners, but for accepting the Richard Wong Faith Partner Award through the Habbies this year. Um, through this partnership, you also participated in our webinar series for 2020. So you were instrumental in our pivot into the virtual space. We could not have done it without you. So thank you so much for, um, for joining us. And any last comments before we- Just continue to please use me as webinars come and they're faith oriented. Just think Kimberly Clark, like the company. Grab me, use me, I'm here for- I'm here for you. Arms at that is, Throw that it is That is awesome. That is awesome. And, you know, as as they say, as my mother would say if she was here, she would say, be careful what you wish for, I because we, we <laughs> will take you up on it. <laughs> okay, you guys. Pleasure. Thank you, Thank you very much, Kimberly. And last awesome. but certainly not least. So we have uh, two more award titles, but since we're coming up close on time, all three are going to join. They're getting um, on camera right now. So I'll cue them up. Uh, first, we have Jati Grama, who is accepting the, oh, actually, first on camera is Nicole Lee, who is a co-chair of the Habitat Young Professionals Board, joined by Faith Loggerset, who is her, also co-chair of the Habitat Young Professionals Board. And then Jati Grama will be joining us from the Women Build Council in just a moment. Um, Jati Grama will be joining us from the Women Build Council. Oh. Okay, if you're watching this from home uh -huh. while joining the live stream, you gotta end. You can't watch it and be on the live stream. Okay, if you're well, we watching mute. It from home uh -huh. while joining the Oh, uh oh. We lost <sighs> two of them. This is super fun. All right. Yeah. Well, we're going to continue the conversation. Nicole, dialing from Boston? Philadelphia. Philadelphia. I don't know the East Coast. Yeah. yeah, it's okay. Somewhere on the East Coast. 
So Nicole recently uh, started grad school. Yeah. It does is on academic leave from the Habitat Young Professionals so Board. Recently, I started grad school. Uh oh. All right. Faith and Nicole, if you are multitasking and watching the webinar from home. Muted. Nicole, you're not you're not muted. Could you mute maybe in between? No. No. Are you guys able to see me? Yeah, yeah. we can see you. We're all okay. here. Yeah. I'm wearing headphones, so it's not. All right, no worries. Yeah. All right, we got it figured out. Thank you all for joining. So, yep. Jati is accepting leadership of the year on behalf of the Women Build Council. Faith and Nicole are accepting volunteer of the year on behalf of the Habitat Young Professionals Board. So, since we're running short on time and because the Women Build Council and Hype NYC Board will, will be long launching for 2021, we thought, why not? Let's just have everyone join at the same time. Um, Nicole and Faith, why don't you, or actually Karen, before we pass the mic, is there anything you'd like to share? I think really that, you know, um, I'm so sad that, you know, you put Ricardo and I on microphone and then gave us an hour. And so no surprise that we talked ourselves to the end of time, uh, our time here tonight, but, and so we're running a little close to the hour, but uh, I don't want you to uh, think of that as anything, um, anything that d is disrespectful. You three in particular are so instrumental. When I think about, when I first met jo Jothi, you, I heard from uh, my colleague in the Lowell, Massachusetts Habitat for Humanity, who said, you need to meet this incredible woman. She's so passionate. She's so, um, she's so passionate about women build. She's so pat, you should know, I think you should meet her. And I think, you know, there's a place for her at uh, Habitat New York City. And so at the time, um, Jothi was living not far from me and we actually met for a drink and chatted. And that was, I don't even know, three years, four years. I don't even know. Three Something years like that. Yeah. And since that time, you have just been like a quiet storm, Jyoti, running uh, and keeping our Women Build team underway. And I was just really, I'm grateful for you uh, to you for for all everything that you do, uh, working with the the team at Habitat to bring other women of all types uh, to our organization. And so thank you um, for me. And while I've got the mic, and then I'm going to shut up, and we can hear from you guys. But I want to say a big shout out to Faith and Nicole. I have been on so many countless. Uh, webinars, conversations, meetings in person between Ricardo, big shout out to Ricardo for uh, really the structure around uh, the Habitat Young Professionals Board and really putting some there there, um, you know, putting some real structure around it. And, um, you know, you the, between the three of you, you represent the future of this organization, the women that are going to come in and help us uh, to be better that it, uh, and um, and help us to help the women, largely women that we serve, and for for Faith and Nicole to really make us known and to anchor us into the next generation, you know, of Habitat. Uh, <laughs> she says, touching her gray hair. So, uh, so you know, um, I I don't think we get the chance nearly enough to thank you uh, nearly enough each of you for the important work that you do. Uh, behind the scenes and uh, every day in every way. So from me to you on behalf of a grateful organization, thank you all of you so much. And we want to add, we want I want to give you each a chance to add a couple of things before we uh, get ready to wrap up. Um, uh, we've got, uh, if you don't, I, I, I want to hear from each of you if you have anything you want to add. Yeah. yeah. I also want to thank, um, while Faith and myself are, Go ahead, Nicole. So, oh, sorry. Uh, we'll while, while Faith and I are accepting the award, I just want to give a shout out to the entire board for doing such a good job throughout the year, but particularly during the COVID crisis. Um, we were so nimble and just changing pace and running with things. So I want to really thank the board. That's true. That is amazing. You guys represent a really strong group of board members. Faith? Yeah, just just to echo that, what I was going to emphasize is Nicole and I are obviously very honored to be accepting this award, but it's on behalf of our entire board. Um, every single one of our board members um, has just shown 
amazing dedication um, over, especially over the past almost year now, um, sticking with us despite personal changes, changes around the world, career changes, and continuing to volunteer their time to support Habitat's mission. And that, to me, has been incredibly inspiring um, just to see how many people um, are volunteering their time despite everything going else going on in the world to support um, everything that Habitat New York City is working towards. Um, and the only other thing I wanted to add that I was, um, when I was refreshing myself on the theme and, you know, reading all of Ricardo's lovely prep notes was, um, is that, you know, sustainable and working for a sustainable future also means it's not just, you know, the idea of being eco-conscious, it's also making things last, right? And making things, um, you know, that will still be there for the next generation, as you were mentioning, Karen. And I think the reason that we are so poised to be able to do that with Habitat New York City is because we have been so willing to adapt over the past year. And that willingness to adapt and to move to the virtual space and continue to pivot is what is setting us up ultimately for success to build a future, a sustainable future for affordable housing. And I'm just so incredibly grateful to obviously Nicole, my co-chair, the entire executive committee of my board, um, and obviously Ricardo, without whom none of this would be possible. Um, and I'm just very honored to be here today and just have the chance to um, to get to see all of you on Zoom or sorry on Skype, and um, and just to uh, accept this award on behalf of the rest of my board. Thank you. Thank you for correcting that. You know, and and it's. Um, I want to make sure that the board hears me say thank you to each and every one of them. This is an award for the entire board. That without you know, you guys are a unit and you do things tremendously well. And I am grateful to each and every one of you. Um, and so thank you, um, thank you to Nicole and Faith for th uh, accepting this award on their behalf. Ricardo, shall we go to uh, Joti? Yes, Nicole and Faith, that was beautifully said. Thank you for your leadership, your contributions, and for your dedication to taking us into the future. Um, love a heart emoji. Thanks, Faith. And up next, we have the amazing, unstoppable, incomparable Jati. Hi, everyone. Hoping you can hear me now. After we can. All I'll be quick. I know we've got the homeowners waiting and they are they are the most important part of Habitat. So I don't want to keep them waiting. It is an honor. I was completely taken aback. Thank you so much. It is like being rewarded for something you love doing, which is just not the way it's supposed to be, but thank you. And the Women Build Council is a thank you for everything they've done. This is, you know, all of us work together. It's been a great group of women. I'm looking forward to collaborating with the HYP going forward, it's going to be, your energy is already kind of, oh my God, I'm feeding off it. So it's going to be amazing. I'm really looking forward to the collaboration. Um, but I just want to give a shout out overall to Women Build. I started off at, at Habitat, just hoping to help people get their houses into homes because we've moved so many times. I knew how important that was. But from that very small step, before I knew it, I was doing many things with Habitat. Loved every aspect of it, the restore, the gala, everything else. And Women Build has been my favorite. Just getting women together, it's empowering. And what they can achieve, as all of you know, is quite amazing. I look forward to doing that more and more in the future. And thank you, everyone. And the, the office and staff at Habitat, love you guys. You are just an incredible joy to work with and be a part of. Thank you for welcoming me three years ago from the bottom of my heart. Thank, thank you, Jyothi. You know, the secret to all of this stuff, this volunteerism, is that it's a bit of an inside job, isn't it? You know, you we start out in this work to yeah. try and help somebody else, and then we find out that we're the ones who are getting helped. I call well, it sm small less selfish. And I think, um, you know, it's not selfish in the bad ways that, you know, that people chide yeah. you for. It's selfish in the way that it fills us up. And, and these are times where we all need to be a little filled up. So um, thank you. Your message is inspiring for, for all of us. So and thank you for all that you do. Stay safe. 
stay safe, everybody. And thank you to all of the Happy Award winners who have been with us uh, tonight. Thank you to all of you listening to this. And thank you to each and every one of us. We're all award winners. Um, uh, we, each, every, each and everybody who rolls up their sleeves or picks up a pen or a paintbrush or a hammer to help Habitat, um, or puts their fingers on the keys or donates something to help Habitat. So follow us on social media if you're not already. Follow, follow, follow all the ways. Um, and if you are so moved or moved by the incredible contributions of these incredible um, volunteers, make a gift that is of that is personally significant to you through the donate link that is located here. Um, but meanwhile, just stay a part of this work. Follow, look for what's next. Um, we hope to find more ways to connect and communicate about our mission. Uh, now more than ever. So be safe, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thank, Thank you, you. Faith. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Jati. Um, we're going to get ready to launch our next webinar. Um, so you can catch up with Nicole, Faith, and Jati via Women Build and Hype NYC. Um, just give us a few moments. We're going to transition over to the next webinar with our homeowners and home buyer. Um, and a quick reminder, if this is the first virtual event you're joining for today, tomorrow we're hosting an amazing live stream at 7 p.m. It includes the live lighting of the Empire State Building, and we have a very special guest appearance and a very big announcement that Karen will be making at the end of tomorrow's live stream. So we'll see you there, and we will also see you at the next webinar with our Habitat NYC homeowners. Have a great time.